necessarily. You know, we need to good, do a good job of helping him, and our, and our guards haven't done a great job of helping him. And the way people play, uh, Dan, is that you know we got to screen for him, but you, you also got to drive it so that way you can force help, and then he can be the beneficiary of help. So, uh, and we can also do some things defensively where he can get out and run. And, you know, he made two baskets yesterday, and they're both layups. So, so uh, uh, matter of fact, we made one shot yesterday outside two feet for the game. So. All the shooting drills we've been doing haven't been working very well. <laughs> but we also shot a lot of free throws, which was good. So, uh, But the big thing with Ben is just be aggressive. I mean, be aggressive, and, and he's got to forget his misses. I mean, that's that's what the scores do. They can't remember the misses on or remember the makes. And, and, you know, he played a little tight yesterday. But, hey, don't put it on Ben. Put it on me. Put it on the whole team, all that stuff. Hey, when we didn't get off to a good start, we realized that Western Kentucky was good and could give us everything we wanted. I think, I think everybody was a little tight. Coach, what are they vulnerable the to? I mean, it seems like on paper they'd be vulnerable to a big man down low and do some. Could, could be, could be, but also now they're not tiny. You know, uh, uh, we played last year in the lead eight. I thought McAdoo was their best big guy in the game. So, so I mean, he's he's a low, he's a talent, and and certainly playing small with uh, with Harrison at the four. You know, he's I mean, he's still a pretty good sized guy. I mean, he's probably. Maybe an inch shorter than Perry or Jamari or something like that. So I mean, he's not small, but but the biggest thing is we got to be able to take advantage of them scoring the ball inside because they're going to try to take advantage of us getting our bigs away from the basket without question. Were you surprised with the, how the backcourt? <laughs> That's the Very worst soon. ring I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Good gosh, put you asleep instead of waking up. <laughs> Was we surprised with how the backcourt struggled a little bit with the pressure that Western provided? And do you expect to see more pressure from North Carolina? Well, I think North Carolina, without question, will try to pressure us. I don't think they'll try to press us as much, but they'll try to pressure us and, and they'll, they'll do some things in the half court, maybe maybe extend it full court. But but we didn't do a good job against it yesterday at all. And you know, we practiced against seven guys and eight guys the whole week, and, and, and still didn't do a great job. So that's something that I know that we can attack better, and I know we will attack better. I don't think you smiled the whole game. You didn't seem like you were very happy the whole game. No, I did smile. I did smile uh, a couple of times. Maybe you guys weren't watching when I did smile. But uh, I, don't, I wasn't unhappy the whole game. I didn't get on our guys at all uh, for the most part uh, the entire game. Uh, I was a little upset at halftime because, you know, we, we forget how we're guarding something or whatnot. But, you know, the, the thing about it is if you, if you try hard, you don't always make shots. And we were trying hard. We were just a little tight. But th that game's behind us. And, and, and I don't think that that game will have anything to do with how we play tomorrow at all. You said a couple days ago that uh, you, know, you hate the late game on Friday, but you have the earlier game on Sunday. I know this one isn't terribly earlier, but still like about five hours before you guys played Friday night. It seems like the guys don't care. No, 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 we yeah. don't care. When I was talking about like we had the noon game, yeah. you know, we got pregame at 7.30 or something like that. No, we're fine. The guys were able to sleep today. And, you know, they're 20 years old. And, <laughs> and uh, they may say they're tired, but they're not, they don't get tired. And, and, and we've got a entire offseason, as all teams do, to, to rest up. So that won't be a factor at all. Last obligatory question, just about how important it is about KU North Carolina, not so much about the two coaches. Well, I don't know if there's any importance at all about the two coaches, uh, at least from my perspective. Uh, uh, you know, I think if Coach Williams and I were to go out there and, and play one-on-one, -on -one, I think I could back him down on the post pretty good. So, of course, he could beat me on the golf course. but. Uh, but it's two good teams playing each other. It's two good. It's two good. Uh, uh, they got good players on both teams, and, and they're both tradition rich and they're intertwined. You know, with uh, with Coach Smith and uh, playing on the '52 national championship team, and, and him being, you know, maybe as innovative and as great a leader of a program that we've ever seen in North Carolina. And, and Coach Brown being a great player there and winning a national championship here. And, Coach Williams, obviously having 15 great years here, and now being the head coach there, there there's a lot of things that, that have uh, intertwined our programs. But I think it's strictly out of respect standpoint. You know, there's some bitter, bitter uh, rivalries out there. I don't see anything bitter about this at all. And, and what's unbelievable is, in, in, in the tradition-rich years of both our programs, I think we've only played 10 times. Is that right? And I think they may almost all be in the NCAA tournament. So. Uh, they're few and far between, so I'm sure the fan base of both programs will enjoy it. All right, guys.